What's up, everybody? Once again, we're discussing animations and videos inside of Photoshop. Um, in our previous video, we discussed the concept of frame-by-frame -frame animations. We also talked about how to adjust and create different workspaces. In this video, we're going to go um, into not frame-by-frame -frame animations, but creating timeline animations using keyframes. Um, then we're going to create a, an animated ad. Um, so I'm going to click on Create New. And this time I'm just going to make my own setup. I'm going to do uh, 1,000 for the width by 750 for the height um, for of pixels. And uh, we'll just call this random and hit create. Um, there we go. Here is our document. And I've still got this up. I'm going to switch to create video timeline. And I'm going to click on the words create video timeline. Um, Next up, I'm just going to make a little shape on here. It's actually, yeah, we'll make a shape. We will fill it um, with red. Hold shift to make a perfect square. And here we have it. I'm actually going to rasterize that square um, because video timelines don't necessarily like um, paths like that. Uh, all right, I'm going to move it over here on the left side. Um, now you can already tell that the timeline section looks a little bit more complicated than the frame by frame. Um, but once you understand what it's doing, it's, it's really not that crazy. Uh, we're, we don't have any audio on ours right now, so I'm, I'm not worried about that in the slightest. All I'm going to do is hit this little carrot next to the folder icon uh, for this current layer. And then we'll click it right here for that rectangle. Uh, okay, so these things that look like stopwatches are key frames. Uh, and they kind of allow you to create an animation by, the, it will tween or animate in between uh, different keyframes. So if I click on the stopwatch symbol or the keyframe animation symbol right here where it is, that tells Photoshop uh, record or remember this placement of this object. So now if I move forward in the um, timeline here, and now I move my shape, to the other side of the screen, like that, it automatically generates another keyframe uh, based on my new location. So if I go back to the beginning and hit the spacebar to play, you can just see that it automatically plays in between the two. Um, so now let's let's drag this around to 15, and we'll just maybe now we'll put it down here at the bottom. Automatically generates another keyframe. Now we'll go towards the end and we'll drag it up here to the top. And now watch, we'll play. It'll go across the screen, bounce to the bottom, bounce back up to the top, and it's like our old uh, screensavers. That's what um, what using keyframes to animate looks like. It's really not too crazy. That one was with a shape, but we could do with something else. Uh, let's create type, and I'm just going to create the word animation. Uh, let's use a different font. Let's go with Futura bold and we'll make it a more interesting color there we go okay um, this one I'm gonna go down here and we are going to create an opacity keyframe so I'm gonna go back to the beginning ah Okay, uh, when I actually I created that, it did not include it over here. Um, so by the way, you can zoom in or out on yours um, by dragging this around. Mine was way over here, so it wasn't even able to be seen. So I'm going to drag it back to where we can see it now. <clears throat> I should see the word animation if I toggle that layer back on. Okay, we're going to pull that down. Uh, and I'm going to set the opacity at this to zero. After I clicked on the keyframe, we'll go to the end here, and now we'll turn the opacity back up to 100. Um, so this is another way you can animate using keyframes. This time we're not using uh, the transform command, we are using the opacity command. So it goes from not being visible to being visible. Now if that's too slow for you, you can move that keyframe just by dragging it to somewhere else. And then it will just animate that automatically for you. Um, if that wasn't enough for me, I could go down here to style. 
I'll check that one. And we'll currently just have no style. And now we'll go to the end and we'll add a style to it. So I'll hit FX now and we'll go to outer glow. And let's change the color. We'll make it that same color purple. Very noisy. We'll spread it out quite a bit. Let's turn that noise down actually. There we go. Okay. It's not, not exactly how I wanted it, but that'll be fine. Uh, so now if we play, it's not only going to fade in in between my two opacity keyframes, but when it gets to this keyframe, it will now start adding in that style until it's fully visible when it gets to the end. If I really liked that, I could say File, Export, and I've got a couple options here. If I wanted to create a uh, looped animated GIF, I would say Save for Web Legacy. If I wanted to export an MP4 file, I would say Render Video. Um, I'm not really going to do either because we're going to keep playing around with this. So let's let's kind of delete everything that we've got. Um, I don't really need an artboard for this. So we'll just get our blank layer. That way it's not as complicated. Um, so we're not seeing anything because that layer was right there. We can adjust this however we want to, though. Okay, um, let's actually close that out completely. This time I'm going to say File, New, and we're going to make an ad. Um, I'm going to make an Instagram story, so we're just going to search Instagram story size. And it looks like it is 1080 by 1920. So we'll come back here. We'll call this 1080 by 1920. We'll leave the resolution at 72. I'm going to change the background contents to transparent. And we'll just actually call this uh, Instagram story. And if that's one we're going to use again, you could hit save right here. And that will save that as a custom preset size. So if I ever wanted to use that again, it's, it's just going to be right there, uh, easily accessible for me. We'll hit Create, and here we go. Um, remember that you can change the panels that are visible right here. I'm actually going to ungroup this artboard again, so we just have a, a blank document. Um, if I wanted to create a video timeline, I totally could. Let's see. Let's have a solid color layer of white. I want that visible the whole time. And now let's let's make an ad for, oh, I'm trying to think. Um, hmm, so I'm into these little uh, beat maker things that are pretty fun. I'm going to find one. Let's change our size to large. Let's see. Okay. Let's go with this image. I'll copy it, come back over to Photoshop. We will paste it. It's pretty good. Uh, but what I want to do is to select the white background around the edges and to delete it. So now it's just the object. Cool. All right. So I am going to drag it up out of my canvas. Um, that's layer one. I'm actually going to change the name of that to um, the little, we'll just call it teenage engineering. What, what was that? It was a pocket operator PO-32. We'll call it pocket operator. That's what those are called. Um, all right, we'll open up the dimensions here. We're going to create a position one. We'll leave it up there. We'll move forward a few frames. We'll drag it down to the bottom. automatically generates another keyframe and then here we'll have text that generates and I'm gonna change this text to I'm gonna sample that yellow there we go and we'll say the letting of my text is off so we'll space that out, or you can space it out with the character menu. Let's see. Here we go. Center our text. Move it to the middle. Um, we can change where that one starts. I actually do want it to start right there. We can zoom out a little bit so we can see what's there. Okay engineering 
and let's see, we'll have it say pocket operator, or is it P032 pocket operator? We'll have that slide in from the side. P032. That made a new little layer for us, which is exactly what we want. Um, for teenage engineering, I'm going to do this. I'm going to right here. We're going to, this is getting a little complicated, I know. We're going to hit an opacity keyframe. Come over here. Actually, we're going to go back to that opacity keyframe. And we'll make it, make it fade in. So we'll go in a little bit, change it now to 100, see what that looks like. So now we're animating a couple of different things. That falls down, and then the text fades in, and then P032 starts. What I want is P032 to slide in from the side. Um, all right, we'll toggle that in so we don't have to see it. P032, we're going to open. We're going to make a transform one. Um, so I'm going to select that layer. We're going to go right over here. I'm going to move it off the canvas size. And where we want it to go, is right there dead center. Um, P032, so let's hit play. Let's go back to the beginning. That falls down, pocket, oh, P032 did not move for us. I think I forgot to add a keyframe. So good point, we're gonna select that layer, click on this, move that over to the side, then we're gonna go over here to four, I like it when we have problems, and we'll move it back over because other people might have the same issues. Let's try this again now. Falls down. There we go. Oh, and then we had our white background. Our color fill did not go in all the way, so we're going to just drag that across. So that will show up too. Boom. Boom. And I guess we, if we want to add a little more pizzazz, we could even make that P032 kind of glow or change colors with a style. So we'll hit the style one, and we'll go here to the end. And let's change our layer style now. So let's say, let's go drop shadow. And our drop shadow, we'll want it to be Maybe this ugly blue. I don't know why we're doing this. It looked plenty fine, but this is how things are going. If I want to change the color, I still can. I just click right here. I guess we could make it glow that same shade. There we go. Pocket operator slides down. Flat sound. There we go. And then at the bottom, we will just, uh, or maybe in the middle, we'll just say, now available on teenage.com. Change the size of that to 36. It's getting a little crowded here. Adjust our text, the letting needs to be a little bit closer there and that one let's see that's this I guess we can have that fade in again too. opacity at zero go a couple frames in opacity at 100 and we've animated quite a few aspects of this but that's okay and boom now available on teenageengineering.com if I want oh and once again our color fill layer needs to go all the way across, as does our teenage engineering layer. If I wanted to end earlier, I can move this. And that's kind of the end point for the different objects in my video. Okay. Um, if I wanted to save this as a GIF, I could say export, save for web, but because this is an Instagram story, what I need is an MP4 file. So I'm going to say export, and I'm going to say render video. We will call this Teenage Engineering at Instagram Add. Make sure H.264, make sure you've got the right dimensions, and we'll just hit Render, 
this shouldn't take too long. I know it's going to the right spot because it just defaults to the previous location uh, that we used. It takes a little bit longer than our previous one um, just because this is a slightly longer animation. And once that is finished exporting, I should have a file here. There it is. We'll preview it, still not too big. Falls down from the top. And then there we go. There is our little uh, animation that we made. Pretty fun. Let's make another one. This time I'll say file new. And we're going to go to our Instagram story size and hit create. Let's make an ad for Starbucks. I wish I wouldn't have made this with the artboards, but that's okay. Uh, all right, we'll make a solid color background. Uh, I'm gonna pull up like the Starbucks green color in a minute, but let's pretend that it's something along the lines of that. Um, all right, let's search, let's see. We want something that has a white background. Um, now, I'm, because of the fact that we're making an advertisement and we're not actually using it uh, for real, I'm not super uh, into making sure we get public domain images. Um, but if you want to, you are more than welcome to do that. Okay, let's open that image, make sure we're getting it at its highest resolution, copy it from here, go back to Photoshop, paste it. That'll probably work size-wise for us. Um, I'm going to select the white background. It selected too much, so I'm going to knock down my tolerance to 25. Try that again, still selected too much. Let's try 15. That's pretty good. Select the opposite. And I'm deselecting the bottom of the drink now by holding Alt and clicking on what I don't want. You could zoom in and mask this manually if you wanted to, but this should be pretty okay. So I've got a good selection of the cup here that I created using the um, magic wand tool. We'll hit the mask button. And there it goes. Now I would encourage you to zoom in with a harder, soft, or harder, smaller brush to clean this selection up. You could paint black and adjust this. I'm holding shift and clicking between all of these options here to just clean up this selection. You can see why I wanted to clean it up. Magic Wand Tool does a pretty good job of working quickly, um, but selections are always tough to get perfect and just take a good amount of time. Sometimes you end up ma manually zooming in and masking things. The Pen Tool would have also been uh, a great thing to use in this case. And I'm not gonna make you guys sit through watching me get the bottom of this as well. Let's, let's just see if there's anything that really needs it. Kind of getting there. Okay. Ignore these straight lines when we're out there. Okay, I don't know what this drink is, um, but this time, let's see, if we wanted to make a video timeline, we could do that, and we could have this fall in from the top, uh, just the same way we did with the other one. We can make a position one, we'll drop in the keyframe, move it up to the top. Oh, you can see I've got that little white line there that I don't want, um, but I could mask it out. Move in a little bit. And drag it to the bottom, and it would animate that for me automatically. Boom. Oh, okay. Good point, good point, good point. Um, what we should have done a little while ago is we had this issue with the mask, right? Where, let's fill that with black. We have a mask and we have an object. Um, with animations, what you really want to do is the mask doesn't really work because Photoshop's trying to, it doesn't really understand if you're trying to animate the object or animate the mask and the mask can't move as well as the object can. So in this case, what I would first have done would be to apply the mask, which just deletes it. Um, so it's a destructive um, edit there, but that's okay. We'll create the video timeline, pull that out, drop the position keyframe, move that up to the top, move it forward and pull it down. And that should just animate it dropping in from the ceiling. And boom. Um, instead, though, what I'm going to do 
we'll undo that. Let's go back to where we were a minute ago. I'm going to create a frame by frame animation. We'll click on the words create frame animation. Uh, here, this one's, I still think this is maybe a little bit easier to understand. Uh, we can have this drink right here in the middle, make as many frames as we want. And it's just going to have automatically have that there. On this frame, maybe we will rotate this a little bit to the side. Only does that automatically for everything. That's right. So what we'll do is we'll have to duplicate it, rotate it, duplicate it, rotate it, and then we choose which picture, which uh, ones we want on each one. So first frame has that one, second frame has only this one, third frame has only this one, and we just kind of keep going back and forth. And what this is going to do is just animate uh, this little drink wobbling along against the background here. Let's see. Now that's definitely way too fast. So let's have it wobble a little bit slower. That's good. I would maybe add a couple more frames. And maybe just have it go back and forth. Um, and now what we can do, what drink was this? It looks like a maybe a caramel frappuccino. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't drink that. Um, more of a plain coffee type of guy. We'll hit OK. Let's see, what font does Starbucks use? If you're not sure, you can Google it. Santana Black. I don't really have that. We'll see if this place does. The font has something they claim is similar. That's the font for their logo. Same as this one. We'll just find something that we think looks good. So we'll go back to Starbucks and we'll just say, um, hmm, cool off with a, and my tracking's a little spread out, so we'll adjust it. Yeah, my tracking is way wonky. Just the kerning between these two individual letters, which for some reason don't want to be adjusted. There we go. The add a space manually. Okay. Maybe we'll make it say, this summer. And then down here. Oh, it's not even a frappuccino, is it? It's not blended. Um, I have no idea what that is. Uh, we'll just call it a caramel iced caramel latte. And here's what we'll do. We'll put iced on one layer. So we'll get rid of that. Make sure that's centered. So we're going to rasterize the green in the background there. Select the word iced, center it, put the word caramel on here next. So we're just animating this so that it says uh, iced caramel latte one word at a time. So I'm putting them each on their own uh, layer. Very nice when Photoshop tells you uh, how spaced out things are. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So we want, <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be fun. Uh, boy, um, I'm going to, let's see, delete this animation. 
and just so it's not so insane, I'm going to move all of these things where they're supposed to be on the first one. So I'm going to go back to this summer, move that to where I want it to be. That's why it's, it's actually easier to kind of build your finished product first and then move everything. Iced. Caramel. Latte. That spacing does not look correct. We've got our different layers, and we'll just blank them out a little bit. We'll make 11. So on layer one, we're going to get rid of iced caramel latte, and we'll just have it be just the picture. On frame two, we'll have the picture jiggle to the left, and we'll have it, and then we'll go to frame three, and we'll have it jiggle to the right. Frame 4, and actually all the way through frame 11, we want to have this summer cool off with A. Now frame 5, we'll leave it the uh, same, except we're just going to have it jiggle to the left again. Frame 6, we'll jiggle to the right, and iced. Frame 7, iced caramel and we're let's see frame six was jiggled to the right frame seven can be jiggled to the left frame eight jiggle to the right again and the word latte now the rest of these nine ten and eleven should have iced caramel latte on them let's see so we were left right this one should be left so we'll Jiggle it to the left a little bit, get rid of that one. This one, jiggle it to the right, get rid of that one. This one, jiggle it to the left. All right, let's preview this animation this summer. Boom, boom, boom. Now it looks like I had a little bit of a mess up there. One of these, I believe it's this one, iced caramel latte does not have iced and caramel on it. Let's actually slow everything down. Let's say other, let's say 0.3 seconds. We'll hit play. Yeah, that's good. That's exactly what I want. There's my little Starbucks ad. Um, the green's not exactly the same, by the way, so I could make a color fill layer above this, solid color. We'll sample that green and it should be across everything. Keeping in brand for Starbucks there. Boom. Um, file, export, render video. It's at our correct Instagram story size. And we'll just call this Starbucks ad. Hit render and wait patiently. And then we should have our Instagram story once this is done. So in this video, we talked about the timeline functions in Photoshop. We also reviewed uh, the frame-by-frame -frame animations and all the different tools that are contained within both of those. And then we also discussed how to create animations for specific ads. We made one using the timeline functions where you can drop keyframes and animate in between them. And then we also made one for Starbucks using a frame-by-frame -frame animation. For your project, you can use either as long as you're creating an ad uh, that would be featured in an Instagram story using the animation functions of Photoshop. Um, that is it. For this week, I know this video went a little long and that both of these topics were a little bit complicated, but it's fun. You can do it. 